Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a review and kind of a setup on this Roku streaming bar. So the theory behind this is it's going to have a built-in Roku player, but it's also going to be a um, external streaming bar for your mute, for your sound to come out. But what's really nice is this HDMI port is ARC, so it's audio return channel. So whatever we're watching on TV, whether it's a DVD or, or anything else, it should return the audio and come through this speaker. So it's like a sound bar and a stream bar and a, and a Roku streaming stick all in one. So it's got a really nice fabric front. It's smaller than I anticipated. This is everything that comes in the box. Pretty standard remote. I don't see any extra buttons on there. Another HDMI cord, power, batteries, and an optical cable. And around back, there's where the power is going to go in. Optical, HDMI, even though it doesn't say uh, ARC, it is ARC. There's a USB plug, and that's a reset button. It does have some mounts, some threads. And then there's the remote. So you can expand this. You can buy a wireless subwoofer and wireless speakers that will connect to this wirelessly. You don't need to add wires. You will have to run a power cord to each one of those, but you can plug that into an outlet, but you won't have to run a wire from here to here. Okay, so my what I'm wanting to do, and that's why I'm gonna incorporate this into the review, is I wanna get rid of, I've got a big audio um, receiver that selects my different HDMI ports. I've got a big subwoofer and these speakers. I just kinda of wanna get rid of that and I want to go to a streaming bar uh, with a, a sound bar. Now, this one looks really small compared to this TV. But I want to test this audio return channel. So, like, I've got a DVD player. And I've got my DirecTV box. So, with I'm going to plop to plug those in directly to the TV. Right now, those go through the, the audio receiver. And that's how I switch between DirecTV, DVD player, and my Roku. Here I've got a Roku Ultra, which I really like. Don't have many problems with the Roku Ultra. But all three of these HDMI ports go through this uh, receiver, and then I, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to connect those now to the TV and then run one HDMI cable down to this, to this sound bar. Okay, so here's the back side of my TV. Right now, this cable goes down to the uh, audio switch. But... I'm going to run, see how that says ARC? On your TV, you've got to find the one that says ARC, HDMI 2. HDMI 1 is not ARC. So I'm going to run the HDMI cable into the one that says ARC. Okay, so this is the power supply that comes with it. you got to plug that other end here. And then you got to plug this end in. you got to find an open outlet and plug it into an outlet. Now the other end of this, we're gonna, this will have power on it. This is what we're gonna plug into the Roku. Okay, so now we're gonna use the HDMI cord. It says, uh, it's got this little label on it, it says ARC. So now we take the HDMI cord. On your TV, you find the one that says ARC. And they're sitting, you gotta plug it in the correct way. Make sure it kind of like snaps. Now I'm gonna run the other end of this cable to the back of the Roku. So now I've got I've got my power cord I'm gonna plug in there, and then I've got this HDMI cable, and I'm gonna plug it, it only goes in one spot, right in the HDMI spot. And that should be all I need. Okay, so when they're plugged in, they stick out the back a little bit. So you're not going to be able to put this up against a wall. The cords do stick out the back. And then the TV does, it did say Roku. Yeah, I'm going to walk us through that get started. So if all you have is a TV and you don't do anything else like direct TV or a DVD player, then you can stop and go right to the setup. But if you've got other things... You've got, now you've got to plug these into your TV on other ports. So I've got this other HDMI port. I'm going to plug my direct TV into there. 
Okay, so my HDMI port coming out of my DirecTV right there, which is this one right here, I gotta plug that into the TV. So now my audio, so when I'm watching DirecTV, it's gonna be displayed and it'll be displayed on the TV, but the sound should go back and follow this, this HDMI down to the sound bar. So I should get sound when I'm playing the streaming from Roku and when I'm um, doing the direct TV, that's audio return channel. So it should let the audio from this, when I've got the HDMI one selected, it should go down to that sound bar. Okay, so this is what the screen looks like. I haven't done anything other than I plugged it in, plugged the power in and the HDMI cord. And then if, you may have to put your TV on whatever uh, HDMI port you plugged the uh, Roku into. Now it's time to put the batteries in the remote. Now Roku does things a little different. The positive is faces forward. Normally on remotes, one's forward and one's back. So positive is forward on both of those. And then we got to access this little button right here. So that's what that's saying. Pair your remote. So I can press this little button. Oh, it says five seconds. Okay, well, I didn't press it for five seconds. I just pressed it once. Okay, now I've got control, and I use this thumb wheel to select English or whatever language you got. I'm using the up-down arrow. Once I've got English to select, I press OK, which is the center button. Wireless, set up the new wireless connection. Okay, this thing wants to connect to your Wi-Fi. So click yes, click okay. Set, and it's gonna move the thing over to set up wireless connection. It's gonna scan for your wireless connection. There's my Wi-Fi, so I click on it. Again, all I'm hitting is the okay button right there. Now I gotta enter my password for my Wi-Fi using the cursor. And see, it's gonna, that's a, you gotta move the cursor. I'm moving the purple thing. And if you wanna go uppercase, it's over here. And if you need letters or different symbols, it's over here. Okay, so when you're done with entering your, your, your password, scroll down until connect. And I just use the down arrow until connect is highlighted and then just press the OK button. Now it's testing my wireless connection. So it says it's connected. It'll probably have to do an update. Yeah, it's gonna do an update. Okay, so I gotta select okay. Now I'm just hitting the center of the purple. Okay, so after the update, it restarted. And when it restarts, it, it looks like this. That's kind of like the boot up. Okay, so it wants to auto detect the display type. I do that. I, I go ahead and do that. So just hit the OK button, auto detect, and it's going to check your HDMI cable, HDMI connection. So mine didn't like the automatic. So I gotta check, I gotta select a resolution. I thought mine was a 4K TV. So it can't, the HDMI input is not capable of playing video at. So let's try 30 Hertz. Yep, that one worked. Use 4K, ultra high definition, 30 Hertz. Then I'm just gonna click OK. Okay, so you have, to, you have to do this in 10 seconds. So scroll up to verify, yes, the screen looks good. If you don't, it, okay, it says your display will now change. I just was sitting here and I didn't do it. So at this point, you do have to have uh, an email address to log into your Roku account in order to start streaming with Roku. So you can scroll down. 
it's in or no just it's highlighted up there so just hit enter then you can enter your email address using this way if you're already you do the same thing enter your email address to get a new row start stream already have a enter the email you've used on your account so you either have to set up a new email or if you've got if you've got roku before just use your email address you used before Okay, once you enter your email, now you have to go to your email account and look for the activation code. Okay, so I went to my email, but I guess I wasn't fast enough, but my email's being really slow, so it said unable to connect. Try again. So if that happens and I clicked continue, they send you another email. So you got to click on the newer email. So when you click on the link in your email, it takes you to the Roku webpage, and there you can label it. It should say your name and what email address. Then click the I have read and hit continue. Then it's going to ask you, it asked me if I wanted to link my uh, DirecTV. I didn't do that. But I am going to link my DirecTV and Prime. So check those boxes. Then it asks you questions like they're going to, like, are you interested in free movies, music? You can select this stuff. They're going to put channels on there that, that you might like. Then this next page is all about, they want you to add all these different channels. Just scroll all the way to the bottom and hit continue. So this is, this is the part that takes a while. Your Roku is going to add all them channels now. And it takes, I didn't, I hardly added any channels and it's going to add 60 of them. You know, I wish it didn't do this. Um, this is what, this takes a while. So they do give you kind of funny words, turning on hyperdrive, engaging warp drive. So on the app, it's going to take you now. It wants There's all these subscriptions they want you to subscribe. Just scroll all the way down. I mean, they do give you a free, start your 30-day free trial. I guess these are pretty good, but I just click continue. You can put the, the Roku mobile app on your device. And there's a tips and tricks channel. But it does say setup complete. Okay, so now it says all done. You just use the uh, back to the remote and hit the right arrow. So it looks like we're on a welcome the world of the sound bar. So I'm going to use the volume. Oh, so it does give a volume display of the sound bar up in the top right hand corner. I'm pressing this volume. So I'm turning it up right now. I'm trying to see how good it sounds. But I like having that display up in the top right hand corner. That's from using the volume on the sound bar. And then I can mute it. Let's get you streaming. Okay, so I got out of that promo mode. I just hit the home button in the top right. This is your home screen. These are, then I'm, now I'm using the purple buttons, arrows. These are your, um, so over here is the left. See how the white is highlighted? That's where the arrow is right now. But if you go to the right, go to home, these are your channels. So that's your Netflix channel, Prime, now they add all these extra ones. So if there's one you don't want, when it's highlighted, see how the white circle, white squares around it? Hit the star button right here, hit that star button right there. And I can, I can remove, scroll up, remove channel. It removes it from this home page. That way it kind of keeps things um, kind of decluttered on the home screen. There can be a lot of stuff on this home screen. Okay, so as soon as I turned my direct TV on, um, it came, it switched automatically to the direct TV. But if I hit this home button, it switches to the uh, Roku back. But then if I make a change on the direct TV, it automatically goes back to the direct TV. So one thing I did notice, so when I do the volume now, 
it doesn't show it. It turns the volume up and down from DirecTV. And I know that the remote's working by that little flashy on the, that little thing is flashing on the streaming bar. But I don't see it on the top right-hand side of the DirecTV, so it doesn't do that. So I really don't know what volume I'm at other than, but I can mute it. And then when I hit the home button, it goes back to, so there is a little bit of automatic switching there. Otherwise, I would have to go into my remote and change the source on my TV. Okay, so I'm back on the Roku. I'm using, using the YouTube app. I'm watching one of my YouTube videos. Now when I adjust the volume, I can see it on the top right-hand side. So I've been doing some volume tests. This thing gets really loud. So, but it definitely you can definitely tell it's coming right from that one speaker. But that speaker surprisingly does get really loud. Okay, so I'm going to watch Days of Thunder. This is how I test surround sounds. Now, I'm not hearing much of a bass. You're definitely going to want a um, subwoofer to go with this. There's hardly any bass coming out of this streaming bar. But I'm going to play Days of Thunder and see how it does. Okay, so if you ever want to test um, a surround sound, go to Minute... Go to the 14 minute, 37 second mark on Days of Thunder. If you've got a really, really good sound, uh, surround sound, this is really going to, it's really going to test it and it should sound incredible. Now, this, it sounds loud, but I'm not getting any kind of definition whatsoever. No, no sound coming from the left or the right, definitely no bass, but it is, it is loud. Okay, so my it, it, it's a sound bar that makes your TV speakers, I mean, it, it sounds like TV speakers, but you do get, it is more loud. That's about all I can say. You don't get any kind of surround sound from it whatsoever, I don't think. This is a really good test for this. Um, I just, yeah, it, the thing is so small compared to what I've got as a surround sound here. That was expecting a lot of it to, to replace all of that but I, I was hoping for a little bit more now with i am going to do a video on the wireless subwoofer and the wireless speakers i hope those are a little better and i'm also doing another i'm gonna do a comparison this is the cheaper one i'm gonna get the more expensive roku soundbar and i'm gonna uh test the two i'm gonna pair the two to each other it is a little the other one's a little bit bigger but this one you you can definitely hear it i mean it's loud and i like being able to hear it, but you're losing, you don't have any definition of a surround sound. Okay, so I'm going back through the settings. There really are no extra settings for a sound bar. You think there might be like an equalizer or something? There's, no, there's not. Uh, only thing I found under audio, that's the menu. I did do a bass boost. That helped a little bit, but not much. Volume mode. Speech clarity, yeah. There's really no equalizer or anything for this sound bar. It's pretty much, that's what you get is what you get. So this sound bar is definitely not meant to uh, give you a home theater just the way it is. I, again, I'm gonna do a video where I add more to it and see if that does it. I, I kind of doubt it, but I might be surprised. I really just want to get away from kind of all this big stuff I've got around, but that does produce a pretty decent sound. So thanks everybody for watching.